So the question is begging to be asked, is TAC worth it for those guys that are all by themselves, don't have a group to go with, solo dolo in their backyard, training at all different types of distances, all different types of angles, trying to figure out how they stack up with other people, other average Joes, because that's what TAC is, um, and trying to figure out what this whole big picture looks like. I stand here to say, in this video, I'm gonna answer that question. <laughs>So, um, as I said in this video, when it comes down to that guy that's trying to figure out how he stacks up, um, how to prepare his gear and get ready for the hunting season, I hear guys talk about that, but at the end of the day, like, is it worth it? Is it worth going even if you're by yourself? Um, as a guy that went with a group last year, I can definitely say it's worth it. Like, there's no question. I've done it on both ends where I went solo dolo, as well as having a big, I say big group, a, t a group of two that we actually knew some guys there that we ended up joining and having a big old cookout. This year, I slept in my truck and I very much feel like it was well worth it. So to rewind to explain like why my whole situation ended up being in a truck, um, to give you guys a quick rundown, I had my daughter's dance recital that Saturday bed off after that was all said and done because there's no way that I was going to miss that um, but ended up going down there I was originally planning on going with the group those guys ended up having to back out last minute and so I was about to buy a, a place and rent it out but the way my bank account is set up to do all that last minute and on my own dime without splitting it it was there's no way there's no way I was going to be able to afford that so what I did was rush down, enjoyed some range time, shot on the range because I was planning on shooting Sunday. And when I did all that, it led me to a very simple place of sleep in your car. It's free. And so I ended up uh, finding some place off in the cut where I was safe, able to sleep in my car, got ready for the next day. And when I got there, I actually originally only had one course. I was planning on doing the prime course. Ended up doing two courses, so glad that I signed up for the extra, and I think it was only like $10 extra to add some um, beautiful ride-ins for that beautiful Sunday. So I did the UV course is what I ended up adding in um, that Sunday. And so when I did that, I did the Saturday morning, or Sunday morning, U, uh, UV, which was extremely technical. There's actually some pretty long shots um, that I was really, really excited about. Um, targets that were through some like thick brush where you had to figure out where your trajectory was, should you get on your knee or should you stand on your tippy toes. I think one shot, just as a taller guy, actually had to hold like a mid squat type of position. Um, and it was on this like white, I don't even know what the animal was now, but I was like squatting to get into the branches. Hopefully I have some pictures kind of going on at this point to kind of show you what I was doing, how I shot. Started off really, really bad on the UV course. Um, I was kind of embarrassed. I was like, man, I, I don't know any of these guys um, that I ended up joining. So to backtrack when I talk about it being worth it, cause I'm gonna get to the shooting, but I think the coolest thing about archery is the community. Uh, I, I've talked about it. There are things I love about the community. Obviously there's something about every community that you're like, okay, we can deal without that. But the people and the welcoming, like even as a black man in a, in, in a sport that is surrounded by a lot of not black people, I think it's, it was really, really cool to just step out and say, hey, can I shoot with you guys? Is that okay? And feeling welcome. I think is something that just goes to being in 2024. It's kind of cool just to be able to sit back and say, this is who I am, this is what I enjoy. Um, even if I end up not being in the majority, I can be who I am and just enjoy it and live it out loud. And so being able to walk into that space and be welcomed and joined and actually got paid a ton of compliments that were like super, super encouraging, which leads me to like my final point that I'll touch on at the end of the video. But yeah, you can join anybody, even as an individual, and just be like, hey man, can I join you guys? Is that all right? Like, are, do y'all mind me like shooting with you guys? And literally both times that I asked, they were more than welcome. 
like super awesome environment to be a part of. And so ended up having some really like actually pretty deep conversations I didn't even expect just to kind of talk about some spiritual um, spiritual life as well as what gear we prefer to shoot and how we ended up on the gear that we have now. It, it was just the gamut of conversations that for me was super satisfying and super fulfilling um, to my heart. And so if you get the chance, go. Like, go, go, go. Um, but to fast forward to the course, we did have some like fun shoot shots on the UV course. I think that was probably my favorite. Um, did the prime course later on that day with a different group. Um, a group of three I actually started off all by myself and caught up, because I'm shooting by myself. Caught up with a group and ended up joining nice. in. A uh, really fun, fun group as well. And so, as I said, I'll have some pictures to kind of like backtrack especially that first group because that first group was competing they were a group of like 12 that actually joined and we split into like two separate groups and one group i was in the first group we went ahead and we were just kind of moving so we didn't hold up any targets and it was really really cool and really satisfying to me like are really encouraging to me in regards to like shooting by myself a lot of the times, trying to figure out how good I am, how good am I getting? I think I'm doing pretty good compared to what I'm seeing. And I feel the progression. I spend a ton of time like trying to get good, but to get paid some compliments that were like, man, like, do you, do you compete in anything? Like, do you join, have you joined any like ASA competitions? Do you guys have like a local club? And all those answers being no, 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 I don't have a club, don't, do not do anything in regards to competition. It was really encouraging to me and something that I've been having the itch for that I made reference to in my first, first video of saying like, I wanna compete one day as an ex football player, somebody that always had that competitive edge, just being able to find this sport that is archery. Um, one, cause it feeds the family, but I think on the other side of it for me was Man, I have something that I can kind of pour my heart into to actually be better, um, be better at something. I think all of us need something like that in our life, and this is clearly uh, paid the way for me when it comes down to that. And so, hey, what's up? So uh, I'm gonna take a quick little pit stop in the video because I realized there's a topic I wanted to touch on, which relates to targets and how it relates to shooting dots and uh, 3D targets and understanding there is still a point that you're trying to hit, obviously when you're actually trying to score um, inside of your competitions. The main thing I really wanted to touch on was bino choice as well as um, learning the targets. I think first and foremost, when it comes down to binos, I know a lot of people when I first started hunting and shooting, they, everybody was, hey man, get the uh, 10 by 10 by 50s, 10 by 40s, whatever the actual second number is. And they're just like, man, that's, that's the number to go with. That's, that's the one that gives you the widest field of view, um, super comfortable to look through and you see less of your jitter. They had a bunch of compliments for it. Um, but for me, with the woods that is as dense as what's behind me, it was pretty clear, like, I'm going to see whatever I need to see with my eyes by the time it gets close enough. And then that's what I'm going to identify. And if I really want to touch something with my eyes and see and identify further out, I felt like I might as well go with a little bit higher. So I'm actually running the Vortex Diamondbacks uh, 12 by 50s. And the reason why I ever bring that up is because it really does help in regards to 3D shooting as well. Um, going, going from shooting dots to going to 3D shooting, you're really shooting at points and ideas of where you think you want to hit. And this really helps me clarify um, some targets. However, there are still plenty of targets that I think really knowing them really benefits. I found that even when I would hit the point that I was aiming at, I'll get up close and realize I was nowhere near or not exactly at the point. And then some of the some of my shots I just missed, as you guys are going to see or have seen. It. But I think the biggest thing for me was understanding like learn your targets, learn the 3D targets, see where you want to point, learn where you want to point. There's actually an app out there. I can't remember the name of it, but I was talking to a guy while I was shooting um, and I've actually seen some videos on it. So I'm definitely going to download that so I can see some of those Reinhardt targets a little bit closer so I can actually learn the dots where they're located. Um, so when I get out there, it's just a quick reference when I'm looking through my binos. What, what, is, what does this target actually look like? But outside of that, I still know roughly where I want to aim. And so that's one of the growth things that I really want to focus in on in regards to the next time I get into some of the 3D shoots, especially next year, and prep for actually doing some competition stuff. Um, I think you got to do your film study, you got to do your work beforehand. And when I relate that back to football and all, that, all of the film study we did, obviously you got to know your opponent. This is simply the opponent of trying to hit a, hit a foam target. And so when I keep it super simple, that was just a big thing for me that stood out. So.
get some uh, binos that actually can go out and touch something 12 by 50 is what I am running. I don't have a lot of experience with anything other than a 10 by uh, 40s and a 12 by 50s, but again, it's paid me dividends when I pick up my other other friends' binos. I asked to look through them at the same targets. I definitely can see a little bit clearer, not a crap ton clearer, but a little bit better. And so obviously I think nothing beats experience and just learning the targets firsthand. But if that's where I'm at and that's what I got, that's what I'm utilized. So taking it one step at a time. Uh, I'm going to shoot a few more. What is that leading me to? I think at the end of the day, I want y'all to know that this is an announcement that I want to become a uh, legit pro archer. I, I, obviously, I want to make it a joke. I want to try to make things light, but I don't even know what that even looks like. like I need some help in regards to blue writing out the blueprint. I've looked on Archery Talk, I looked on YouTube, trying to figure out what that even means. And so I don't even know what it means. I don't even know what that looks like, but I know I want to start competing. I know I've looked into um, some the ASA app. I actually downloaded that. I'm going to start looking at dates to figure out where those competitions are located. I've watched just about every single YouTube video that breaks down archery competitions as well as scoring, um, whether it be 3D or the indoor um, stuff when it comes down to like these type of targets. That, uh, not Lancaster, goodness gracious, they do do it at Lancaster, but like Vegas shoots and all those types of environments, I, I want to like pour myself into that. I want to see what that actually looks like, but leads me to some other upgrades that I plan on making. I've been saving up since I bought this, um, getting ready for an upgrade, and I think this might be the year, especially with all those things being said. So got some things in the pipeline that might be uh, happening sometime soon. I already got a wifey's approval and got a promotion at work. So I think it's time to make that jump. So with that being said, um, some other things that kind of happen at TAC, I did get the UV scope, made some videos on that. If you guys haven't already seen, um, actually got it sighted in roughly. I think I need to go back out and double check my, um, either my tape or, what I have my bottom pin, because as you guys know, um, in the UV3 scope, um, it has like three pins or four total pins, two that you can move, two that you can't. Don't know why that is the thing, but it is what it is. I know why it's a thing and it's cool and practice kind of, but some of the adjustments I wish they can do a little bit better. So definitely plan on doing a review with that and talking to you guys more about my thoughts on it, not that they actually matter, but just to give a little bit more of a deep dive. I think there's a whole lot of hype videos out there and there's definitely some hype about it. I think it's super slick, super clean. So you're not gonna hear me water down the hype, um, but what you will hear is a very detailed um, review in regards to my take on how it might uh, stacks up to the uh, AccuStat 2, um, which is what I had been running and in regards to adjustments and all those things. So I did, I did end up buying this scope at um, Total Archery Challenge, which is what I was making reference to. And that first um, video that I made, which was the part one, if you haven't seen that, I definitely would love if you would check that out. Hopefully it's interesting. I try to make it as interesting as possible um, to myself. And so if it's interesting to me, hopefully it's interesting to you. Um, but bought the scope just because I got a still of a deal. Guy actually got it in a raffle and was not gonna put it on his bow. I then went over and I was like, hey man, you did not seem excited about that scope, but God, check it out, it looks pretty dope. He was like, man, like, yeah, I think I'm just gonna give it away. I, I'm not even sure what I'm gonna do. And I was like, well, like, would you uh, sell it? <laughs> and so ended up talking with him the next day, met up with him at his booth and was more than willing to sell it at a pretty, like, a deal that made me have to jump on it. And so it made me excited, obviously made the jump. Um, not mad that I bought it, but obviously there's things that I feel like could be improved if that was not already evident in regards to my initial statements about it. Um, but again, this isn't the time to really break that down. I definitely will try to find some more time. I've been down in this basement, um, I think long enough and hopefully enough of this actually makes sense. So at the end of the day, in review, before I actually um, signing off, I want it to be very clear. I think TAC for one is very well worth it. I think you guys should go. If you get the opportunity, do it, do it, do it. Even if it's by yourself, um, get out of your shell, get to know some new people. I literally walked away with 
like five numbers and some guys I really am going to hit up next year to make sure I shoot with again in some form or factor, even if it's just on the uh, warm up range. Like all of that community is so, so awesome and just to me super fulfilling. And then when it comes down to just like shooting and the stuff that you get to shoot, like for me, I, I, I am very fortunate to have the space that I have behind my house, but I can't go shoot 70 yards downhill at a Cobra um, at this weird slight angle. Like I don't, I don't have that space. And so if you have any itch to kind of stretch that muscle, do some things with your bow that are not the 20 yard, 30 yard dots that I end up practicing at over and over and over again. And so many arrows sit down range um, to the point of, uh, that's another conversation, but a whole lot of arrows being sent down range, then definitely go out and do it. I think it's well worth it. Super, super, super fun. I think you can use it for many other um, avenues, whether it's testing your gear out. I did not do that. Prop my backpack. I never would hunt with a backpack on because I'm in Tennessee, whitetail hunting from a tree. But at the end of the day, whatever it fits your fancy, if you like to shoot your bow and you like community and you like people, go do it. Like, just do it. It's, it's so cut and dry. I think it's well worth it. So, yeah, um, uh, at this point, I'll just start rambling. So, again, signing out. This is William Alderman.